So the purpose of this video is to acquaint you with various assignment types. If you've already used assignment types on Canvas, you may not need to see this. But at any rate, the topics that we will go over are creating an assignment, uh, some of the key settings on assignments. I've been messed up on these more than once. Uh, the notion of a rubric. Uh, they're very enthusiastic about that over at the uh, Center for Teaching and Learning. And they can be useful in kind of standardizing grading, though I don't use them very much. And finally, uh, incorporating peer review into assignments, which can be extremely valuable when you're trying to manage large courses. So creating an assignment is one of the most common activities in Canvas. Uh, what I will do here is I will go to the teaching workshop. And you can create assignments you know, in the assignments area down here. But the most common place you're going to create an assignment is just in a module. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the uh, first overview assignment, the uh, background form assignment. So what I will do here is I will click the plus button. And uh, once again, you can add content of different types. But in this case, assignment is the right type. So I'm going to call this assignment 1.1 background form. And when you actually just create the assignment, it just uh, gives you a pretty much an empty assignment to work with and then you click on it and then you can go in and edit its properties. So what we'll do is we'll edit. I'm not obviously going to assign a due date. Uh, this particular assignment is simple enough so that what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to paste in what I had in the workbook see how that works sometimes that works well sometimes not so well uh, it's interesting it, it, it here we'll just it appears to have <laughs> chosen to duplicate the numbers I have here no problem we'll just make the edits So now I have some assignment instructions here. Then what I am going to do is um, move on down. I'm just going to give a point to it so we can see what the grading is. Obviously, I'm not going to be grading your faculty. And now a thing that's very important is you have to identify the type of submission. In this case, it'll be an online submission. And uh, I am going to specify uh, file uploads. I'll restrict the type to Word documents. So doc, comma, docx. Those are the two common Word extensions. Uh, it's not a group assignment. doesn't require peer reviews. And I'm not going to specify a deadline. Now, um, the background form is in part one, so I'm going to have to get the background form as well. I could also embed it in here. And uh, I think in this particular case, what I will do is demonstrate the creating it elsewhere. So we'll update the assignment. Normally in an assignment like this, I'd probably end up uh, putting the form inside the assignment itself. Where I store the form separately is where I have a bunch of uh, assignments using the same form. OK, so we'll come to modules. And since I said it was in part one, what I will now do is uh, go in. And this time, what I'll do is I'll add a file. And uh, this will be a new file. I'll upload it. I think it's in my, uh, let's see here. I think I've, it's in the assignments area here. Ah, yes. So I'll go open. And then I'll add the item. And so now we've got the form. Uh, 
and uh, maybe I'll put this above the assignment. I might want to rename the assignment here so there's no confusing confusion. I'll just change that to background form assignment update and then I will publish it. And that's really all there is to creating a simple assignment. One of the things that you can do with assignments is attach a rubric to them, which probably is a good idea if you've got a relatively straightforward assignment, and particularly if you have a bunch of external graders, such as uh, graduate students. Uh, for most of the assignments that I do, uh, I don't find a rubric that useful, but I'll quickly go over where you can find it and create it. So to look for a rubric, you go to Outcomes. And from Outcomes, you can go to uh, Manage Rubrics. And then you can click on Add Rubric. And what you can then do is you can, uh, we'll call this a Test Rubric. And yeah, maybe spell it properly. All right. And then we click on uh, uh, you have criteria, so we can basically adjust our criteria here. Uh, let's say clarity. Uh, and you have different ratings. Uh, very clear, good English. Hard to read, illogical. And so you can create these ratings, and uh, you can also, uh, you know, add new, cri new uh, criterion. Let's see, did I not click that right? Yeah, there we go. So here we've got. Uh, Logic. I'm just making these up, things up as I go along. Uh, I can specify uh, fully logical, no missing cases. Logic is indiscernible. And you can create a whole variety of levels, and then you can attach the rubric to assignments. Um, and by doing that, um, as I say, you can probably improve the consistency of the grading somewhat. Um, you can play around with the rubrics if you choose to. Uh, they're not very hard to create or attach. The last assignment topic that I want to briefly touch upon is peer reviews and uh, to see where peer reviews get entered I will go into our assignment here and I will enter it though I won't actually turn this into a peer review assignment so we'll go into edit and when you come down in this assignment, one of the things that you can do is require peer reviews. And when you check this, it's going to give you a bunch of other options. Uh, and uh, you can manually assign peer reviews or automatically assign them. If you automatically assign them, it'll ask you how many uh, you want. And uh, we'll specify a date where the assignments are made. Now, so if I said, uh, three peer reviews per user, that would mean that every assignment would get reviewed three times and everyone would do three peer reviews and then I can specify a date. Now, what peer reviews essentially do is they give the students access to an interface very similar to that of the grade book and the Crocodoc so that they can make comments on uh, the other students work, they can you know, highlight things, they can make edits, uh, and they can, you know, write text. And 
Uh, you as the instructor can then look at their peer reviews and you can actually evaluate the quality of their peer reviews as another assignment. This is something that is particularly useful as your courses, particularly graduate courses, get very large because uh, what it does, it takes some of the grading uh, work off of you. Uh, in my introductory uh, or in my capstone class uh, that I'm teaching uh, this summer, um, I'm assigning peer reviews uh, to each student's project so that each student will have multiple students evaluating his or her projects. And this is actually very similar to what I did in the face-to-face -face class where I had a science fair where every student created a poster and then uh, those students who weren't presenting rotated around and evaluated the posters of their peers. Uh, and here I'm going to, uh, in the online class, will manually, I mean, will automatically assign the peer reviews such that people will um, actually review each person's posters. And I said automatically, but actually I will manually assign them uh, because I want some control over the process. And that way um, I will get a lot of feedback on the projects. But even more important, uh, the students will get to see each other's work. And uh, a lot of times that can be a very positive experience, especially on large projects where the students have put in a lot of work and they're proud of what's happening.